everybody, Jay Adams in Wyoming at the Big Show. We have a very special presentation for you today, the baddest bench. You know, the bench press is still the premier exercise in the gym, and we have some of the best in the world on hand for you today. And to help explain how it's all going to go down today, I want to introduce world record holder Eric Talman. How are you, sir? I'm good. I'm good, Jay. Every time I see you, you're breaking world records. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> so help us out here. There's a lot of confusion mm -hmm. about the different uh, plies. Uh, you can lift raw, mm -hmm. or you can lift single ply or double ply. That's right. Well, the differences between raw powerlifting and multiply powerlifting are kind of like this. Picture a like a NASCAR or a Formula One car. Now that car has been souped up, but you can't just throw any old driver into that car and expect him to let that car perform at its highest peak. So in raw powerlifting, it's very much like you see in a conventional gym. A guy's just wearing a singlet and a belt and pretty much nothing else. With equipped powerlifting or multiply powerlifting, suits are worn. Now today they're wearing bench press shirts and those shirts do allow the lifters to do more weight than they normally do. However, much like the Formula One car that I talked about earlier, you can't just get into a bench press shirt and expect to add pounds to your bench press. You've gotta be really strong and you've gotta really have excellent technique in that bench press shirt. So the differences with raw and multiply are just that. The weight that you can use and the amount of assistance that the shirt provides. And Jay, those are the differences between raw, single ply and multiply lifting. They all pose their own unique challenge. Uh, I've done all three. I enjoyed all three, and in the end, they're all still powerlifting. Oh, well, thanks very much, Eric. We're going to see some great benching in the multiply today. And as you can see right here, powerlifting a sport not without its dangers. Let's go down in front with powerlifting sports correspondent John King. He's going to get us started. Hi, I'm John King, and we're broadcasting from Rock Springs, Wyoming, the fourth annual Baddest Bench of the Big Show. Over a dozen of the world's strongest men have descended upon the Rocket City to stake their claim in over $15,000 in cash and prizes, including the ultimate powerlifting championship belt. Who will walk home with the belt? Who will walk home with the prize money? Stay tuned and find out right here on Extreme Power TV. Hey, I'm Eric Talmon. I'm here with Valerie Thompson. We're here at the Baddest Bench in Wyoming. I've never seen this before, so I'm very excited to learn about today's competition. Yeah, equip lifting is different, so let's get right to the action. All right, this is the lightweight division at the baddest bench at the big show. Kevin Harmon opening up with 501 pounds. Okay, now tell me, Brady's got to bring it down. Okay, well right here he's wearing a multiply shirt, and he. This is a very traditional lift. Kevin brought the bar straight down, and the bar path was straight back up, and that's a good lift for Kevin. It's a very technically sound lift. Now, Paul Belliet at 534 has got a bit of an arch in his lower body. He's bringing the bar a bit lower, which shortens the bar path. He's pushed it back over his eyes. He gets the rack command. The lift is no good for Paul. Probably a hitch somewhere in the middle. One. Mike Saunders, 639 pounds. Him curling up off the bench allows him to follow the bar to his chest. But it also it also makes the lift harder because it shortens the bar path. So 639 is actually good for Mike. That's a good lift. It's very hard to do what Mike just did rolling up like that. James the Priest Burdett, one of the favorites for the lightweight division here. A very colorful individual in powerlifting value. You can see all the tats he's wearing. Well, the shirt's very tight across the chest panel, but that's going to allow James, a technically sound lifter, to lift more weight. So he's bringing the bar down. Once the shirt gives out over the bar, he's able to press the weight up. And the opening attempt of 705 is good for him. Very intense, yes, very intense lifter, James Burdett. And now Jason Coker, last year's winner. Got to be the favorite once again this year in the lightweight division. He's going for 810 pounds on his opener. It's almost four times his body weight. It's, and he's ready, look at that. Very intense lifter, very... He's like, bring it. <laughs> Very committed to the weight. Jason has been around a long time. 
He's got a very methodical setup. Uh, that underhook grip on the bar allows him to set his upper back, which is going to shorten the bar path. He's pinching his shoulder blades. He's very technically sound. He's following the bar to his upper chest. Oh! Wow, 810 pounds on his stomach. I hope he's okay. Let's that is see. His lower stomach right there. Second attempt from Kevin Harmon, 534 pounds. If you recall, he's a very up and down bench presser, which means his shirt is not that tight. That's a good lift for Kevin again. He, I think he's playing it safe, and I see a lot of technical proficiency with Kevin. It's a good lift. Paul Balliet nearly dumping 584 pounds over his face. That's 0 for 2 for Paul. If he misses his 30s he's out. Mike Saunders, again, with the head rolling up technique. It's very hard to do. Ooh, and another dump. Equipped lifting is hard, folks. It's very hard to do these bench presses in these shirts. These men are trying weights that are superhuman. They've really, really got to dial that shirt in. James the Priest Perdet, right here, he's sniffing some ammonia valve. Say, what is that? <laughs> yeah, no, it's ammonia, and it's going to amp him up for the lift. 722 on his second. He finally gets the press command. It doesn't look like he had a very good groove on that lift, and he dumps it backwards up against the rack. If those bars weren't there to catch it. If the bars weren't there to catch it, James may not be here any longer. That's why we have those safety spotters in powerlifting, in case the spotters don't catch it. Now, 810 for Jason Coker on his second again. Looks like Jason is having a bit of a trouble with his shirt today. Normally, that's a easy lift for Jason. He's 0 for 2 on that. For Jason, yes. For the rest of the group, no. Kevin Harmon, this is a, a very aggressive third attempt, Val, and as you see right there, he missed the lift. Uh, probably too much of a jump for him. Now, Paul Balliet, on his third attempt, he needs this to get a score in the meet. The down looks good. He gets the press command. Let's see if he's got the strength to lock it out. He's drifting it back over his eyes. Nope. Just, you waste a lot of energy on missing these attempts. You, When I say pass the eyes, it makes you more mechanically efficient, as we see Mike Saunders miss 661. Pushing the bar back over your eyes gives you a mechanical advantage as a bench presser. So a lot of times you'll hear these coaches tell you to bring the bar back over the eyes. So let's watch the very methodical setup of James Burdett. He missed the 722 on his second. Let's see if he can come back and get it on his third. My money is on him making the lift. He's got the bar at arm's length. He's got a good setup. The descent looks good. He touches his chest, gets the press command, locks it out. That's, that's going to be a good lift for James Burdett. Wow. Very excited. Very excited man because he's in the lead right now. The only person that can beat him is last year's winner, this man, Jason Coker, trying 810 pounds on his third attempt. This is his third try at 810. If he misses, Burdett is the winner. Coker brings the bar down. He's already having trouble touching his chest. This is not good. He gets the press command. Nope. Even a seasoned veteran like Jason Coker couldn't recover. Let's toss this over to John King to see the lightweight winner. John King back with you from our fourth annual Baddest Bench of the Big Show in Rock Springs, Wyoming. And our lightweight winner tonight, pretty good evening for you? Yes, great evening, great evening, great venue, and uh, good judging, and thanks for having me on. Oh, it's a pleasure to have you out. I think this is the first time we've met, and you really put on a show for our friends tonight. Uh, well, uh, everybody started going crazy, and I said I was going to go mid-7s, and uh, after I solidified first place, I wanted to go up to 800, and then... Uh, you know, the amazing Jason Coker went up to like 810 or whatever the hell it was. And uh, I was like, well, I can't do 810. So. <laughs> you know, sincerely, you really reminded me of a good rock and roll band tonight. The reason being, you seemed to grab a hold of the crowd from your opening attempt. You took them with you, and I think they might have helped you along the way. What do you think? Uh, this crowd was amazing. Uh, you know, they don't know me from Jack and Jill, and 
they came out, they were screaming at the top of their lungs, and right now I, I can barely I can barely speak because I'm yelling at them. I threw my mouthpiece out there, and one of them was nice enough to bring it back because that was the only one I brought. <laughs> well, you certainly did quickly become a fan favorite tonight. So you're pocketing $3,000 cash for your efforts. Hopefully it's worth the trip. Oh, uh, you know what? I'll be back next year, and uh, I'll be... Uh, I'll be uh, doing the eights up there with those guys and hopefully uh, hit some big, big, big. Now, speaking of which, what is coming up next for you? Uh, I'm supposed to bench at the Olympia, go back to single ply, bench at the Olympia, and uh, I want to be the first single ply guy under 220 to bench uh, over 730. So. All right, I see that happening for you. And you know the next thing and the final thing I'm going to say is going to be really difficult. Coming from a Marine. <laughs> Congratulations, Sailor. Right. Nicely done tonight. Our lightweight winner is broadcast on Extreme Power TV at the fourth annual Baddest Bench of the Big Show. And now the heavyweight division, Val. Jason Gibson is going to open at 694 pounds. That shirt he's wearing is the most advanced shirt put out by the metal company. It takes a lot of proficiency to use it, and that was a very easy opening. That's an interesting box. Proficiency to use a shirt. Yes, because you can't just put a shirt on and expect to add pounds to your bench press. You have to really, really work in the shirt. Now, if you see John, Donald Goldsworthy, do you see that collar he's got on his shirt, Val? Yes, it's very thick and it's what we call grid stitch. Now, you, you bring up something interesting. It is off his shoulders. That allows the shirt to ride down the body and that gives him a groove that is lower down, which in turn is going to allow him to press the bar less than it normally would be. So a lot of these bench pressers, what they'll do, they'll pull that shirt down and they'll bring the bar to their upper belly. And the reason they do that is because they don't have to press the bar as far. It's a technical aspect of the sport that is very hard to master. So let's see how he handles the 705 pound opener. It's a very advanced shirt with a grid stitch collar like that. It's enforced that way so the shirt won't split. That's a very high touch for that kind of shirt and that's why he missed that bench press foul. He needs to bring the bar lower. There's a really nice shot of the belt. And Dan Grauer Holtz gonna open at 7.33. Different belt that Dan's wearing. I'm not sure if you folks at home can see that. That's a cloth belt. It's not gonna restrict his lower body as much as a, as a traditional belt. Here. He's having a bit of a trouble bringing the bar down. His shirt's probably really tight now. He gets the press command, but a lot of times that's what you're gonna see. When you see a slow descent like that, Typically, the shirt is too tight, and the groove on the way up is going to get messed up. Now, Bubba Dowling is going to open with 727 pounds. He's very technical on his setup as well. Watch his thumbs. He's putting his thumbs there to improve his arch. He's putting that upper back into the bench, pushing up the mid portion of his body to shorten the bar path. Let's see how 727 goes on his opener. He's got it at arm's length. So far it looks really good. He's bringing the bar low. He overcomes the resistance of the shirt. Nope, double pump. Almost, almost. It is 727 pounds, folks. He'll probably come back and get that on his second. Now, Scott Meacham is a veteran in the sport. He's been around a long time. Did you see the spotter push his belt down, Val? Yes. That's going to tighten the shirt down. Uh, and it's a technique that, that equipped bench pressers often use. <laughs> it very well may. The touch looks good for Scott. He's got it. Well, I'm not sure if he had that at arm's length or not. Let's check. No lift. No lift. Now, Jake Prazak is going to really kind of jump ahead of the pack here with an 826 pound open. Folks, that's 826 pounds. Let's watch the bar path. So far, it looks good. He gets a good touch on the lower part of the sternum. Not quite sure if he locked that lift out or not. I don't know, but he made it like it was easy, whatever he did. Yeah, the, the work was actually easy. He's very technically efficient. Tiny Meeker, the heaviest opener of all the heavyweight division, 870 pounds. Now, folks, wrap this around your brain for a second. 
this is a light attempt for this man. 870 pounds is very light for him. So let's see how this goes. He's been around a long time. He's a bench press specialist. Right now what he's doing, nope. The shirt was too tight. 870 pounds was simply too light for him. How does that they do train in the shirts. Let's watch 705 for Donald. It's a good press. He gets the, well, not, there he gets the rack command. To answer your question, how that works is the shirts are very finicky. You can weigh a certain weight on one day, and if you're a pound or two heavy the day of the competition, that shirt fits completely different. So there's a lot of variables with equipped power. Now 733 from Dan Grauer Holtz. Uh, too far over his eyes, too early. Not enough strength to recover from that. Look, Val, it's really hard when you get a inefficient bar path on the way down for equipped powerlifting to recover from that. That's what you saw in that last lift. Scott Meacham repeating 738. Um, that the, ooh, he almost slid off the bench. Actually, that's that gonna. Been under yeah, with 738 pounds, <laughs> it's no lift. 755 from Bubba Dowling. This looks really good, right? You see his elbows tucked in. That's gonna make his shirt easier to touch, but he wasn't able to recover from it. That's a technique that the equipped bench pressers will use to lighten the weight at the bottom. Now 777 from Jason Gibson in the very advanced metal shirt does not go for him today. Jason Prazak going 865 on his second. He's got it at arm's length. The descent is very deliberate. He gets the press command. Can he lock it out? Elbows, well, he got the rack command, so his elbows must have clicked through. He's very technical, Jake Prazak is with his lifts. Very technical lifter. Tiny Meeker, if you recall, the opener was way like too him. light. I'm sorry, yeah, I it's very him. ironic that he's called Tiny, <laughs> trying for 942 on his second. We're waiting to get the press command. Tiny gets it, but same thing you see with the other lifters. If, if that descent is not right where these lifters want it, the ascent makes it that much harder. So Donald Goldsworthy on his final attempt of 722 pounds. He has a very technical setup as well. Do you see his feet up on the bench there, Val? It, it's another way of these lifters getting their upper back planted into the bench press, which is going to make them more stable on the bench. Oh, he asked the spotters to take it early. There must have been something that occurred that he just didn't like about that lift. 738 for Dan Grauerholtz on his final attempt. He comes out of the rack, it looks really good. He's got the bar at arm's length. Very good bar path on the way down. Up the press, I think if, yeah. Ooh, he, he couldn't quite lock his left arm through. It looked like a good lift up to that point. Scott Meacham is gonna also try 738 pounds on his final attempt with your lovely purple belt. He gets the press command. You know, today was just not his day. 0 for 3. He'll probably that come so back. Close, though. It is. It's always close at the top, but it's really hard to lock out that heavy weight the shirt gives out there. Bubba Dowling having a lot of trouble with 755 in the bottom. No, just couldn't couldn't put it where he wanted it. Jason Gibson going 804 again. He gets a good touch on his upper sternum. Ooh! Once again, the spotter arms catching that weight. Thank God for that. Jake Prazak, a big jump on his third attempt, going 925. This is, no, just to hold that weight, it's almost a half a ton. But he's been very technical on his other two lifts. Wow, ooh. Once again, the bars catch the weight. Folks. Person that's just very scary and very loud. It is. It, it, it is. Hey, Let equip, alone be underneath. No. Equipped powerlifting, Val, it's dangerous. It really is. These guys are very extreme lifters trying these weights. 
anybody at home, find something that weighs 900 pounds and just try to move it. You'll get an understanding of just how much weight that is. Tiny Meeker on his final, 964. He's going for the win. Folks, if he can get this, he's going to claim the heavyweight championship. He's got the press command. It's up, up. Ooh, I don't know if the spotters, nope, the spotters grabbed it. That's it. Tiny missed. That's a really tough one for him. I'm shocked. It is, as unrealistic as this may sound, 964 is a weight that Tiny Meeker is capable of. Now let's toss it over to my friend John King for the heavyweight winner. All right, we're concluding the baddest bench at the big show this evening with the big winner, Jake Prazak. Jake, congratulations. Thank you. Had a blast. Well, we had a blast watching you, and certainly you pocketed $3,000 and won the Ultimate Powerlifting Championship belt presented by Anytime Fitness. How do you feel? I feel great. It makes the drive well worth it. You know, we've never been out west to one of your uh, to one of these meets before, and uh, the trip just well worth it. We had a blast. And a excellent run meet. But realistically, Jake, is a trip a little bit better now? $3,000 cash, our overall champion of the evening? Uh, it's way better. It, it makes it a lot sweeter, but I have a feeling I'll be buying a lot of drinks for everyone tonight. Honestly, Jake, what was your outlook? What were your expectations coming in here tonight? Um, my expectation was I, I wanted to hit my opening lift, um, and I figured that you know, would get me into the money at least, and then uh, and go from there. Was that mostly your strategy, or was there more to it? That, that, that was about it. Um, uh, you know, money meets are a little bit different. Uh, you, you're after the money. I mean, that's why we're all here. Um, and uh, hit my first one and go from there. Sounds good. And you did certainly go from there, and you took the crowd along with you. Great night tonight. You put on a hell of a show. And uh, safe to say you're rewarded for your efforts, huh? Yes, thank you very much. And I'd like to thank Steve Dennison for putting on an excellent meet. Thank you. Um, and, and thank my sponsors, uh, Overkill Equipment, um, American Muscle, and North Iowa uh, Powerlifting. All right. Thank you so much for making the trip. Look forward to seeing you right back here next year for the fifth annual Baddest Bench of the Big Show from Rock Springs, Wyoming. We'll definitely be back with a bigger with a bigger group. Look forward to seeing you back here in Rock Springs, Wyoming next year for the fifth annual Baddest Bench of the Big Show on Extreme Power TV. I'm Valerie Thompson. And I'm Eric Talwan. We'll see you next time on Extreme Power TV.